Hey, look at these grays. That's proof that I got a lot of wisdom to share with you guys. <laughs> so how's it going, guys? Trading AD here. Um, today is the day after uh, for this trading breakdown of Hertz, HTZ. HTZ got hurt pretty bad by the corona issue. Nobody was renting cars, so they filed for bankruptcy. Now, the issue with this is this is the second time trading this. Um, if you saw my previous video, I traded this when it went into a halt. I use that as an example of how to use the level two to get in and out. Well, I'm going to use this video again for a level two lesson, which is basically lesson three for beginner traders, how I use a level two and time and sales. Now the time and sales is always on my peripheral vision. I just want to see it run. And um, a good time and sales is, is red and green in my opinion. That way I can visually see it on my peripheral vision, peripheral meaning like on the side, I don't always look at the numbers because I'd rather look at the level two. The level two tells me what could happen. Uh, not necessarily what will happen, but knowing what could happen is actually better because as traders, we're always trying to be in the front of the line, right? When it comes to news, we trade on rumor. We don't trade when the, the general public has already found out the issues, right? You always have that friend to ask, oh, well, this just came out on the news. Should I trade it now? It's too late. We already traded it based on the rumor, right? So this is the second day of that bankruptcy issue or news. And we have this rally up and it's rallying on up. So what you see here is not the typical ramp. Now you guys know that I wait for, um, 45 minutes after is 10, 10, 16, 05. So basically it's 46 minutes and five seconds after. This does have the volume and that's basically all I'm going for here because this has a very strong daily resistance here. Right here, guys. So we're dealing with this day. This was today, this was yesterday. And yesterday is what I'm covering right now. The day before it went over here and went as high as 147. Now. All I'm looking for is that 147 area, but of course it's really close to uh, 150. So you can tell right now, uh, spoiler alert, it went to 149. Now that, you know my thoughts about that. There's always that um, OCD effect where when it surges on up to 149 and it's trying to get to 150, but it doesn't, it may actually try for it later on, right? So here it is in the 15s and disregard the gray area. The, the, the lighter areas are pre-market. You can always use those as well. I still use those when it comes to um, finding trend lines because you can tell that this actually helps over here as well. So let me just move it over. Here is the spike right here on that day. And this is a spike on this day. So let's just see how this action works. And I'm going to give you a rundown of what I see um, and how I know it's going to go the way um, it's going to go. So you know that it went up and it went down. I don't like that. So it did a breakout right here, in which case you saw that volume right here. This volume bar of almost four, um, 4 million was for that breakout. And this is me double checking the daily and it's breaking out again on up. Now the, the trick with counter trend is we're trying to snipe exactly when it's going to counter. And the beauty of that is I get to stand here and just watch it go and just hope that it runs out of fuel at the very top when I'm going to short something like this. And I don't want something that just curls down. I want something that shoots on up, overextends, and then drops. And this this one, well, obviously you already know that it does because you just saw the 15 minute chart. So here it goes. The volume is huge. We're talking about 4 million. So when you look at the level two here, you're seeing some really big numbers. I am a little bit worried for a halt, but this kind of action is is okay. It's not showing um, halt-like movement the way that is it's rallying back and forth so slowly. So moving on forward, just, it keeps climbing, and that's that's exactly what I want. I don't want it to keep um, giving me any more red bars or red candles. I just want it to just to overreact and go, and it is. It's just doing, is acting beautifully. So you see the volume rising right here? 
and I'm so close to that 147 that I'm I'm willing to take that risk because you can see that volume rise and you you see the movement go slower and slower 145 this is when I get a little itchy here hit 147 look at that volume so much volume double checking on the 15 minute chart now I see that I could go to 180 and that scares me but the volume here the way it's moving up it has to come back down now right here guys do you see these huge numbers on the on the right hand side on the ask of the level two look at this 1909-1387 times 100 right so we're talking about some really big numbers here 138,700 and compared to that bid on this side and it starts moving down and this is when I enter at at 4,000 shares and bear in mind when it comes to something like this each horizontal line is only five cents so that means if I have 4,000 shares um, five cent risk would um, be two hundred dollars so that's not a big deal I always have this chart guys right in front of me so I already pre-calculated how much shares I would do So this is just the starting light here and you see me just punch in another 4,000 here and I'm just waiting for that opportunity based on the level two. See how it's hesitant to go down from here? Of course, this makes me uncomfortable, but looking at the level two here, um, at a glance, you'll see the bid side with more yellow, more market makers for the, for the primary number versus the ask, but the majority of the time, there's more market makers on the ask more yellow on the right hand side so sometimes it'll shoot back up and you'll see it on the bid like right here which direction would you consider it go going down right because of the because of the way that ask looks if it actually goes that way is another story but it does so it's being rallied pretty strong here basically the problem with the level two for a lot of people is sometimes the the ask will look big and people will see it still go up that's negligible because the level two is just like i said like the rumor what people want it to do the 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 shares that people are asking for hasn't gone into the time and sales what actually happened so this is basically orders that haven't been executed the mindset is very important because when people are yelling that they want more 137 on the ask or selling it at 137, that really pushes more market makers to follow along, follow suit. And it's going down nicely here. And I just added, now I have 8,000 shares. So I'm looking, I'm feeling a little comfortable here and you can see me um, hovering over the trade managers to get rid of the, the um, my stops or alter my stops. and it's moving up. Again, you see the ask larger than the bid. I'm trying to push it back down. Now this is where you see the bid look larger than the ask. Now the 135, and it's going up. But you can tell every time that it, the bid gets larger and tries to go up, the ask fights. The right hand side of the level two is, is fighting it fighting the movement on up. And that's what I want to see. I don't want to see the ask give up. So as it's moving up, you look at the level two and you look at the ask side, for me at least, because I'm shorting it, I'm, I'm seeing how hard are they fighting on the ask side, even though it's moving on up. And it's fighting. It really is. It's a, it's a really strong rally. The movement on up is moving up, but the ask is not giving up. So it's moving on up. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. You can see the level two strong on the bid and it moves up another cent to 146. Now the ask keeps fighting guys. That's what the beauty about this is. The scary part is it's getting really close to 150. So I put my stop at 151, which 
on hindsight, I should set it at 152, 153 because this is, a, this is trade net and there's that slippage. If this was light speed, then I would put it right on 151 because it's only a one cent spread. And look at now, look at it now with the level two. Beautiful. A, lo a lot more market makers on the ask than the bid, and the numbers are are significant. So now I have 16,000 shares. It went up, getting really close. This this scared me a little bit because you could tell right there that I'm at 1,600. Now, bear in mind um, when it comes to this kind of movement, my in my head, I'm just trying to generalize the risk reward is on for for a counter trend is kind of one to one, more or less. Sometimes it's in your favor if you if you have a really good entry, but a one to one is fine when it comes to counter trend because. Um, Statistically, I'm at a 90% success rate. So regardless if if this goes bad, there's always going to be another. But this one, because of how heavy, how much volume it is, and how hard it tried to get to 149, I had enough conviction to realize that it would have to come down before it goes back up. Now, of course, mind you, this is all hindsight because I already know what's going to happen. But while I'm trading it, that is basically what I'm thinking. You can you can identify these numbers here. Here's a here's a hundred and nine thousand ten. I mean one hundred nine thousand one hundred. These numbers are just huge. Here's another one. Now look at the, look at the ask. Which way is it going to go? So whenever you see numbers like that get really big and it starts moving, you know that it's going to need a lot of conviction to even think about going back to that area. And it gets broken down. Now, after going through all that action, will it go up? So now it's a matter of where is it going to go? So you see my line at 133 because that's an area that you could basically draw on the one minute for support. Watch the ass grow. As it keeps growing, it gets chopped down. Now I'm basically even at 16,000 shares. It doesn't take much to do some damage with this kind of number of shares. It gets closer and closer to the 133, in which I would consider uh, taking some shares out because 16,000 is quite, quite some shares. Watching the ask as there's more market makers on this side, more yellow basically, gets chopped down, watch for the ass to grow a little bit more. So I'm exiting 10,000 shares, I have 6,000 shares left, and then of course it's gonna get break down even more a lot faster. So that's basically it guys. You can tell with the level two, it really helps on your executions. So this was a $1,100 trade and it worked out really well for me. And based on the level two, I knew it was gonna bounce back up a little bit. So that's more or less, I know that for beginner traders, watching level two can be very, um, it can be quite a headache. So what I basically do is slow my mind down and take it as a blur because these are all just rumors. I mean, I don't know, I think teachers can relate when it comes to something like this. Basically, if you have a lot of students talking um, you filter out what you want to hear and that's what we're doing at the level two there's a cr huge crowd talking and you can hear the rumors left and right if they want to go to this party a or party b and you're just listening and you can hear more noise on parties a side or you can hear less people but they're a lot louder on on part for party b so it kind of levels off you kind of just kind of visualize it eventually they bounce back and forth they rally too much and eventually they're going to give up and go to one side and that's basically what we're doing with counter trend on the level two so the next question or i think the one thing that i'm probably going to get is how am i able to have that much conviction and put sixteen thousand shares into one trade well you already know that um i would change my approach a little bit um before i would put basically not put all my eggs in one basket but now it's like Statistically, I've always known that I'm 90%. I have my numbers. I have it all on hard drive. I always research it. I know because I visually see what's going on. 
And that's how I have the conviction. My conviction is based on numbers. Numbers based on statistics. And statistics is a powerful thing when if you really believe in those numbers. So I wasn't always like this, guys. Um, I was like that in high school when I traded with my father's money. But by the time I got to 30-ish and I was married, money was, I had that monetary psychological block. You know, I, I, I paper traded for half a year. I couldn't touch the execution button. I was too scared. And there's nothing wrong with being scared because when, when you're raised to not fail and raised to believe that failure is not an option, it's very difficult to execute a trade. So the only way that you can have this kind of conviction is to actually convince yourself that the statistics doesn't lie. So I encourage all of you, download OBS because that is the free way of recording your screen and, and re-watch all of your trades or watch a trade that you didn't take that you should have taken or watch a trade that you took that you shouldn't take. Whichever case it is, you're gonna learn from it because you get to watch it hindsight and study it. And then of course, dissect it and identify if those are lessons to be learned or not. So bear in mind that at 32, I couldn't even touch the keys. So whenever I hear someone say, I'm ready to trade after paper trading for a week, uh, I, I'm, I'm very hesitant to, to help that kind of person. I'd much rather have a very defensive student, someone, that, someone that's afraid of the market than the, one, the gambler that's fearless. If you wanna meddle around, that's always a good thing. But with paper trading, you should always put your emotions into it because you can't get around it when you actually go live. And that's another thing I like to talk about when it comes to conviction and statistics. The psychological aspect of paper trading can be there if you want it to be. Just like if you watched a movie, and for me, the most emotional ones that I would choose to watch are um, dog movies. I have to go on the website to find out if the dog dies before I even watch that movie because I'm not gonna watch one that has a dog dying. I just can't take it. But why? Because we, we know is that it's just a movie, right? Why does that even matter? What matters is how you take the movie. And when I hear people say that they paper trade without emotions, that's great and all, but you're not taking it, you're only taking face value. Paper trading can be a lot more beneficial if you actually trade with emotion. So don't lie to yourself unless you're one of those people that actually can trade without emotions. Those, I would say, are closer to gambling, um, meaning they, they find the thrill and they don't find any fear. That can be a dangerous thing because you can make a lot of money, but you can lose a lot of money. What did Batman say? A little bit of fear is a good thing. That's just a little bit of fear, right? Not no fear at all. So I encourage everybody to start off small, of course, and then every year, I, or for me it was, maybe two months, say my stop was at $50. Then I bring it up to 60. Maybe I'll bring it up to 100. But I take very incremental steps to bring it up to stops of $1,000. In this case, I came to a conclusion that most of my best counter trends happen um, between 45 minutes and two hours after the market opens. And then there's always those news plays that I'm pretty good at. So I'm not worried that much about missing out because there's always something, but news plays are far in between and you end up having to wait. And But if I can wake up in time for at 10.15, there's always something like HTZ overreacting. Um, so that's basically my strategy and approach. In the future, if I sleep better, maybe I'll, I'll, um, I won't put all my eggs in one basket and I'll take two or three trades, but I'm, I like to focus on one. And if I'm gonna focus on one, um, lately my, Monetary satiation, daily satiation is, is around five to 1,000, um, give or take. As long as I'm doing what I need to do, then everything's gonna be fine. Um, I never really had a really bad red month at all. It's always been a green month, and it's always just been basically more or less one red trade or one red day out of 10 days. That's, that's what 90% is. And um, unfortunately, today was a red day. <laughs> and um, I can honestly say it, it's, it feels bad, and I'm going to be very defensive tomorrow, especially on a Friday, but it's kind of a relief that this day actually came because it's been way too long. It's been uh, way overdue for my red day. So, so I really believe in my statistics because when it comes to trading, you can't visually see 
um, what you know, unless you record everything. That's the closest thing you can get to um, to to trying to understand um, the stock market and human behavior, the psychological human behavior behind it. So um, there was an astronaut that said, "The more you know, the less you fear," because it's not like we it's not like we actually know what's out there in the in the in space, right? You can only just continue to study what you're going to what your formidable foe would be when you go out there. And that's it's the same concept when it comes to the stock market. So I hope that helps in the area of level two and how I deal with my conviction and the number of shares. Um, I'm sure it's gonna bring up a few comments. Let me know what you think about that approach and about paper trading. Tell me if you actually um, believe in paper trading. I know the majority of you guys, especially men, that avoid all romanticism and uh, romance, dramas, movies, the majority will say that um, paper trading is not effective. So you start trading with small shares. But bear in mind, maybe think about it and let me know if you if that could actually be helpful to you and what, why it may not be helpful at all. I like to know. Um, personally, I guess I have a, quite an imagination. So I am able to utilize my emotions and, and understand what, what kind of predicament I could have put myself in when it came to um, going live on a, an actual paper trade. So yeah, comment down below for me, please. And if you like what you see, uh, please like this video, click the notification tab if you want to um, be notified for my next stream and, uh, and subscribe if you think this content's worth it. All right, take care guys. Bye.